Genetics is probably one of the most interesting but often challenging topics in biology. When studying genetics, it's first of all important to have a basic understanding of the relationship between chromosomes, DNA, and genes. After all, these are the main characters that we will be focusing on as we go on to look at cell division, inheritance of traits, variation, and genetic engineering, which we will all cover in this series. So if you need help in this topic, keep watching. Okay, the first thing we have to look at is inside the cell. That is where you're going to find the genetic material. So the cell is the basic unit of life and within the cell we have the nucleus, which we can think of as the brain of the cell that controls all the activities of the cell. And it's within the nucleus that you would find the chromosomes, which are here existing as a double-stranded um, structure. Now, within the chromosomes, that is where you're going to find the DNA. So, the DNA is what carries the genes, which would determine the characteristics that we have. Okay, let's look at the structure of chromosomes. So, chromosomes are the thread-like structures you will find in the nucleus of cells, and they are composed of DNA coiled many times around proteins called histones. So if you look at this diagram here, we have some DNA, double-stranded helix, and we have some proteins known as the histones. So these are the round structures here. And typically a chromosome is just built based on the DNA wrapping itself many times around the histone proteins. So we're seeing like a ball of these histone proteins and the DNA just wraps itself around and so it's a bit, pretty much a collection of the DNA and histones that actually form the chromosome overall. Now within the chromosomes, the chromosomes would carry genes and these genes are particular segments of DNA and I'll go into more details on that later but as we can see it from the, the view of the chromosomes, they generally are arranged in a linear sequence. So you can have specific points along the length of the chromosome representing the genes. Now the type and sequence of genes on the chromosome is what determines the characteristics of an organism. So what you're seeing here is a chromosome that is unduplicated. And typically you would not be able to view this under the microscope if you're examining the nucleus of the cell. So an unduplicated or unreplicated chromosome tend to be almost invisible under the microscope. So it would only become duplicated or replicated when cell division begins. So as you can see, a duplicated chromosome, it pretty much has two copies, two strands, and each of these strands are known as sister chromatids. So going back to the whole idea of the chromosomes carrying the genes, so as you can see, I put little strokes there just to represent the positioning of the genes along the chromosomes. Because remember, the genes are going to be arranged in a linear sequence. So that's just giving you an idea of how the genes would be arranged. But just keep in mind that genes are specific segments on the DNA molecule as you're seeing here. And we'll go into more details on that um, later. Alright, let's look at the human chromosomes in particular. So here are some facts that you need to, to know. So chromosomes exist in what is known as homologous pairs. So that simply means, so let's go over here to look at this diagram. A homologous pair of chromosomes is pretty much a pair of chromosomes from the father and the mother, which has the same sequence of genes along each strand. So as you can see here, so I have it color coded. So the dark blue strand, the dark blue chromosome represents the one from the father. The light blue chromosome represents the one from the mother. So this is the unreplicated version of the chromosomes. But when replication occurs, and that would happen during cell division as I mentioned earlier. So when replication occurs, you're seeing how both the mother and the father's chromosomes, they now have two strands. So each of them will consist of the sister chromatids. So what they mean by homologous chromosomes, you would have the same type of genes, the same sequence of genes along each of these strands. Obviously they would have different forms of these um, 
these particular genes, but they exist in the same arrangement along the length of the chromosomes. So we have one chromosome from the father, one from the mother. And you need to keep in mind that we have 23 chromosomes that come from our mother and 23 chromosomes that come from our father. So that is what is meant by a homologous pair of chromosomes. So they exist in pairs, 23 from the mother, 23 from the father. Now, every non-reproductive cell has 46 chromosomes. So this is going back now to the whole 23 chromosomes from the mother, 23 chromosomes from the father. So when you add them together, obviously that's a total of 46. So this 46 chromosomes, and this will be found within all non-reproductive cells except red blood cells which have no nucleus. So all non-reproductive cells should have 46 chromosomes. And this is known as the diploid chromosome number, usually denoted by 2n. So meaning that these chromosomes exist in pairs, so it's a full set of chromosomes. So you have half of the chromosomes from the mother, half of the chromosomes from the father. So 23 going back here, 23 from the mother, 23 from the father. So therefore you have a total of 46 chromosomes in all non-reproductive cells. And by non-reproductive cells, we, we, we're referring to somatic cells, also known simply as body cells. So these are all the cells that are not involved in reproduction. So you should expect that they would all contain 46 chromosomes. So that is a diploid chromosome number, the full set of cells within the body cells. Full set of chromosomes, that is, within the, the body cells. Now, the gametes, they're going to be a little different. As you can see, so the gametes are the sperm and the egg. Now, gametes have 23 chromosomes only. So that is actually half the chromosome number. So half the diploid chromosome number, which is known as the haploid chromosome number. So you have half the set of the chromosomes. So the only type of cells in the body that should contain half the full set of chromosomes are the gametes. So in males, the sperm would carry 23 chromosomes. And in females, the egg would carry 23 chromosomes and it makes sense because when fertilization occurs you want the full complement of chromosomes which should be 46 you don't want too much you don't want too little so when we have the 23 from the father combining with the 23 from the mother during fertilization so the sperm and the egg that would produce the full set of chromosomes which is 46 so you need to understand these terms, diploid chromosome number and haploid chromosome number, especially when we go on to look at cell division in the next video. So that is um, some information you need to know about the human chromosomes. So in terms of them existing as homologous pairs and the number of chromosomes within non-reproductive cells and gametes. All right, let's go on to look at this diagram here. So as you can see in this yellow box, it's showing you what is known as a karyotype, the human karyotype. So that is a complete set of chromosomes within a human body cell or non-reproductive cell. So you can see clearly that they're existing in pairs, as I mentioned before. So what we have, we have a total of 23 pairs of chromosomes in each cell. And we have 22 pairs of autosomes. So these are the non-reproductive chromosomes. So 1, 2, 3, all the way down to 22. So all of these chromosomes represents the non-reproductive chromosome. And obviously the last pair of chromosomes as you're seeing here represents the sex chromosomes. So this is what determines if you are male or a female. Now XY would be male and XX is female. And typically as you can see here in the diagram, the Y chromosome always tends to be a little shorter than the X chromosomes. And when we go on to look at sex link traits, when we do inheritance of characteristics, you will see that there are more genes that are carried on the X chromosome compared to the Y chromosome. So this is just giving you an idea of what the, the number of chromosomes you should expect to see in a typical body cell. 
So this karyotype represents um, one that is taken from a male. As you can see, XY is denoted here, is shown here. So this represents a karyotype from a male. All right, let's take a look at the structure of DNA, which we find in the chromosome. So DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid, that's the full name, is a double helical structure. So it's a double helix made up of two polynucleotide strands. And as you can see in this twisting image, the two polynucleotide strands are pretty much held together by what looks like steps on a ladder. And that represents the bases that we're seeing in this diagram here. So that's keeping the DNA molecule intact. So what you need to understand, these polynucleotide strands, they consist of many nucleotide units. So we have it highlighted here, the nucleotide unit. I'm going to bring it up in a bigger image. So this represents one nucleotide. And you're going to see the DNA molecule having many of these nucleotides. So each nucleotide within the DNA molecule consists of a sugar. So that's represented by the S. And the sugar is a 5-carbon sugar. It's a pentose sugar known as deoxyribose. And then that sugar is attached to a phosphate group. And as you can see going over here, the sugar and the phosphate group, they form the backbone of the DNA molecule. So as you can see here, so we have the two strands. So you can see that there are two sugar phosphate backbones. So they form the backbones of the DNA molecule and they're held together. These two strands are held together through base pairing. So you can see that there are four different bases represented. Adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. And the base pairs are very specific. You only have adenine base pairing with thymine through the connection of two hydrogen bonds. So those are holding the bases together and therefore holding the DNA structure together. And then secondly, we have here guanine base pairing with cytosine. So cytosine and guanine, they base pair usually with three hydrogen bonds holding it together. So this base pairing is what really keeps the DNA molecule intact. And the base pairs are represented here on this, this twisting image by the steps on the ladder. You can think of it that way. So these, these um, bands that you're seeing connecting the two strands, those represent the area where base pairing would occur. So that is the basics that you need to understand about the structure of the DNA molecule. Now let's go on to look at genes and what genes do and how they're associated with the DNA molecule. So simply put, genes are specific segments or sequences on the DNA strand. So if you look at this diagram here, we can see the DNA strand. We're seeing the base pairing. So we did the different bases connected to each other. So what we are see, seeing here are three genes represented. So those are three different segments on the DNA strand. And what genes do, they simply represent a triplet code. So they produce instructions for making amino acids, which would be used to build proteins. So we have a triplet code, or also known as a genetic code. And as you can see in this diagram here, so every three bases would produce a particular amino acid. So this whole sequence of um, bases you're seeing here would produce a particular sequence of amino acids that would form the polypeptide chain that makes up the proteins. So simply put, the proteins that are produced would therefore determine the individual's characteristics, which are the, the phenotype. So what you can observe in the individual, so we're talking about eye color, hair color, skin color, all those different characteristics, for example. So think of it like this. We have DNA carrying the instructions pretty much in the form of these gene segments. And the gene segments, the triplet code, would determine the proteins that are produced. And proteins determine the phenotype of the individual. So the characteristics, the particular traits that the individual has. So 
that pretty much sums up the relationship between chromosomes, DNA, and genes. So in the next video, we're going to look at cell division. So stay tuned for part two. And we're going to see how chromosomes behave during two different types of cell division, mitosis and meiosis. If you found this video helpful, feel free to subscribe, like, and share. And don't forget to hit that notification bell.